Hey, what's up? This is Ellie Einhorn. Welcome to the TalkHouse podcast. Today I'm joined by... Nick Dawson, Editor-in-Chief of TalkHouse Film. Nick, we have a fantastic show today. We have Sexy Hamilton himself, a.k.a. Javier Munoz, in conversation with Stephanie Beatrice. You probably know her best as Rosa for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The very hilarious, very badass cop. Indeed, and she has a new movie out called The Light of the Moon, which she's the lead in, which is excellent, and we'll talk about it in a moment. Now, like Javier... Stephanie comes from a theater background. Absolutely. These guys actually met because they both worked at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. They were there in consecutive years and know each other also through a mutual friend, Melissa Fromero, who's also on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Now, loyal listeners, as you'll know, Javier Munoz is an old friend of mine. Javi recorded a fantastic episode with us last year. Where he talked with John Cameron Mitchell. Exactly. Now, Javi got his start with a man he still works with, Lin-Manuel Miranda. He was Lin's understudy in the very powerful show, in the Heights. Now, a little gossip for you, Nick. When, when Javier told me that Lin-Manuel Miranda was writing a hip-hop musical about Alexander Hamilton and that Javier had signed on from the very beginning, I said, uh, I don't know how far that's going to go, man. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how far that's going to go. I, I've been wrong before. I was very wrong that time. And of course, we have a little bit of Lin-Manuel Miranda related insider gossip as well from Stephanie about her and Lin, but She's going to say that right at the top of the top. So just, <laughs> just hang tight for that one. Hang tight for that. And listeners, we do want to give you a quick heads up. This conversation does delve into some very painful stuff just for a little while. Yeah. In her new movie, The Light of the Moon, Stephanie plays a woman who is raped. And, and the film primarily deals with the aftermath of that attack and its, its effect on her life. And in the context of this conversation, they talk about just how incredibly pervasive this issue is. They mention Bill Cosby, the Stanford case, and of course, Harvey Weinstein and everything that's happening and has been happening in Hollywood. But Nick, having said that, there is so much fun in this conversation. These are two old friends catching up and for the most part, having a laugh. Absolutely. And, and these guys have a great rapport. We get to hear the story of how they met. We hear about a day in the life of Hamilton, what it looks like from morning to night. Also, how Uzo Aduba, a.k.a. Crazy Eyes from Orange is the New Black, gave Javi his first driving lesson. We also hear about the perils of sharing a dressing room with a butthead. Moral of the story, don't, don't be, be a, a butthead. butthead. <laughs> and we get some nice Broadway gossip about Javi and his new bay. Let's just say Sexy Hamilton may be off the market. Interesting. Shall we roll it? Let's roll it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I've missed you. I know. It's been a while <laughs> since I saw you. When was the last time I saw you in human form? I think the last time was when you came and saw the show. Yeah. As then. opposed to like internet form, right. which is a totally. way that people now see each other. Exactly. For sure. Right. <laughs> um, and that was when I was so astounded by all of your performances. But I think particularly you, I was really, really moved by your... Thank you. ...inhabiting of that character. And like, no offense, Lynn manuel but... <laughs> Lynn is sexy. Like, Lynn is sexy. Like, I dated Lynn for, like, a hot second. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, we went on, like, a date or two. Oh, wow. But, like, you're sexy in a different way. <laughs> it's, like, different. Like, all those lines about Hamilton being, like, hot, like sexy in a womanizer. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, like, <laughs> I don't know if it's sense. a compliment, though. It's great. I mean, it's a is compliment. That like, is that, like, the bad boy thing? No, no. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, you know, some people just, like, uh, I don't know, own themselves oh, yeah. in a okay. way. Like, oh, I think Lynn cool. does too, but like, and I don't, I can't compare it because like I did see you. Yeah. So to me, you're that character. Oh, I like it. And then I delivered <laughs> pizza, got d pizza delivered to you I guys. I still have a space in my heart <laughs> for that gesture. Mm -hmm. There was so many boxes so of pizza many pizzas. that showed up. <laughs> because that's like how I show love is food. And I was like, what can I do for them? It was like two what? It was like two dozen pizzas or yeah, something. Yeah, at least yeah. two dozen pizzas. Yeah. And everyone got like a pie. Yeah, and I got gluten-free <laughs> delivered too, just in case. Oh, you did? That's yeah. right. Because there were people who ate it. Yeah. Wait, yeah, yep, you were right. Oh, it was so good. It's how theater actors show love <laughs> to each other is giving each other food and crap that they like normally don't eat. Ever. Ever. Because they're all like, I gotta stay like my instrument. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't remember, yeah. what's been going on? Oh, with me, me, same yeah. old, same old with Hamilton. Yeah. What's been going on with you, P.S.? Well, 
I just watched you in some movie last night. Yeah, I'm in a film that's opening soon, mm-hmm. November 1st, I think. It's called The Light of the Moon. Yes. Um, it's a really, sadly, it's like hyper topical right now, yes. right? Because yeah. of like everything, I mean, first of all, we have a president who's like a self-proclaimed pussy grabber, right? right? There it is. Uh, we have um, multiple big names in the industry, like on many networks and many companies who have been, uh, their sexual assault charges against mm-hmm. them, allegations and like actual proof in some instances. Yeah. And like, and these people are just continuing to do what they're doing and live in their lives. And mm-hmm. finally we're like in this, I don't know, I think it's a cultural turning point where like women and men are coming forward and saying like, this is not, we can't keep doing this. Like right. this isn't right. And Enough so, silence about this. Yeah, yeah. And just everyone sort of like keep it to yourselves. Right. So this film is about one specific story, the story of Bonnie, who is this woman who lives in Brooklyn and she's like regular, you know, sort of your regular next door girl next door. Haha. Mm-hmm. This time she's Latina though. Whoa, hey, mind blowing. <laughs> Cause we also live next door. Um, <laughs> And she's like sexually assaulted. And then the movie is mostly about like, well, what is the, what is that story? Right? Like, what is the story of the victim slash survivor? Because that's the story that we don't hear because there is so much shame wrapped up in being someone who is assaulted. Right? Stigma. Stigma. That's, so much stigma. That's always the word so your I'm fault. After. What did you do? How mm-hmm. did you know? Like how, and, and that's what you tell yourself too. It's like, well, I chose to go to the meeting at the hotel room. You know, I chose to, you know, uh, take on the movie role. I did this. I did that. Like, look at all the things that I did. And we've been like trained that way to to blame it on ourselves. I mean, you remember when that, um, that, I think it was the Jane Doe letter from that, the Stanford rape case. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. When that came out and it was like, I mean, he got not like he was, nothing happened to him. I know. And literally two people saw him raping her in an alley. They've saw it with their right. own eyes and right. nothing has happened. Right. Bill Cosby got off. Like, yeah. it was like, what was it? Like a mistrial or an acquittal? I can't it was remember. a mistrial. It was yeah. a mistrial. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, Harvey's been ousted from the Academy, but like, what about the rest? I know. Like, what about the rest? So you know? many. Yeah. Because so we many. have lived, been in that, in that, um, I mean, I equate that to so many things that I care about and that I'm an activist about mm-hmm. because it's decades and decades of a behavior that, that is rooted in not not in fact. Yeah. It's in perception. It's yeah. in mis un, mis uh, information. Yes. And and it's and it's stuck in that. I call stigma this wall, this ginormous wall. Yeah. Right. And like we, it's our duty to continuously chip away at that wall. Totally. Because it's not. It it's ju- it's it's like man made, human right, made. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's not. It's not. It didn't exist. Right. We created that. Right. And we need to undo it. Yeah. Yeah. But oh. you're right. It, so much of it is about preconceived notions, and yeah. that's why so many people in this country don't understand homosexuality. Absolutely. They don't understand a woman's right to choose. Mm-hmm. They like they they have been introduced to like certain ways of thinking about it, and they just haven't had access yep. to other ways of thinking about it. Yep. And the minute that I think you start giving them access, that's when things get like really rough for them because then they're sort of, have you ever heard this thing? Someone said, I think it was like a Twitter thing that I read the other day. It was like about abortion. And it was like, uh, okay, so you're in, let's say you're in a uh, doctor's office, right? Okay. And then the doctor's office gets set on fire and all the alarms are ringing and you have to get out and you only have a little time to get out and then you hear a child crying in a room. The building's like burning around you. You open the door. There's a five-year-old kid in the corner just like crying, wailing. And then you look in the other corner and there's 50 viable embryos. What do you choose? And you can only choose one thing to save, right? And like almost everyone is going to pick the child, the the kid, because there isn't, to me, at least the way that I think, like I understand the argument of like, when does life begin, right? Like I understand that, but like the reality is like, there's a big difference between a five-year-old kid and a viable embryo. Like there's just a difference. Maybe not, it may not feel like the same difference for say someone that can't conceive naturally. Like Mm. maybe that would feel different, but I don't know, you know, like, yeah. Anyway, tangent. Oh, that was good. 
<laughs> it wasn't mine. I read it on the internet. <laughs> the internets are full of information. <laughs> the internets, all How of do them. you feel about social media? Because I know they've gotten into some altercations there. I am in a love-hate relationship with social yes. media. Um, it is so valuable. It is so uh, impactful. It is so... Um, as, as a means to get a message out or, or, or create attention for a cause or, or, or highlight an event that, that could be really impactful for people, it's absolutely wonderful that way. And then it's, it's also, what I find is my, my hate with it is there are, this is going to get into a larger conversation. Oh, I love a larger conversation. <laughs> like the preconceived notions that are placed on a public figure. Mm -hmm. Right? So I shared my story mm -hmm. and the label I got was I was this peaceful, tree-hugging guy. Meanwhile, I'm like telling everyone, fuck that. Stand up for yourself when someone gets in your face because right. you got to love yourself. Right. And if someone's going to start with you, you throw that punch. Because you got to love yourself because that's yeah. the neighborhood I grew up in. That's the environment I grew up in was you had to fight. Yeah. You had to fight to survive. Yeah. And so I always kept looking at this, this perception of me as, you know, some kumbaya kind of guy. And I was like, yeah, that's a part of me. But you're missing this whole other message where I'm telling you to fight for yourself, stand up for yourself, love yourself, and do it aggressively if you have to. Because there are so many energies and messages in this world that want to pull you down, make you small, make you quiet, and make you less. Right? And I'm like, no, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I come out with that aggression, I find that that perception is what people come up against. Right? And then those folks who are maybe afraid of their own power, maybe afraid of, uh, of my aggression, mm -hmm. want to silence me. Yeah. So I'm not only up against now the messages themselves, but the folks who want me to be something that I'm not. Right. Or that's only part of you. Or, or that's only yeah. a part of me. Correct. And so, and I'm just not someone who's like, I'd rather lose every single follower I have on social media mm -hmm. if, if they are there because they, they only love one aspect of me. Right. And have that one person who actually just accepts and wants to engage with me as I am. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, I guess that's maybe the antithesis of what public figures do. But but I'm very much like, well, bye. Right, right. <laughs> like, I mean, that, that is, you're right. That is the hard thing about being someone that is in the public eye. It's like they think they know you. Yeah. And they do know parts of us. Absolutely. You know, like we're, I mean, I think we're both pretty public with like a lot of a aspects lot of, of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. But it's like sometimes in a, in a very small way, like, uh, sometimes when fans meet me, they want me to be Rosa. Yeah, it's you know? interesting. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm not Rosa. Right. I'm, there's parts of me that are her because right. I helped create her. So yeah. of course there's going to be similarities or that I'm pulling from myself, but I don't sound like her. I don't move like her. Like yeah. I'm just, I, I can't really ride a motorcycle. You know, there's like all these things and people are like sometimes visibly disappointed. Yeah. And that's so frustrating for me yeah. as an actor who's like, trying, wanting to connect with people through story, but then seeing them be disappointed that I'm not the pretend person that I'm bringing to life. It's Absolutely. like such a weird, Yeah, that's so weird. It's so weird. I really loved you, speaking of which, in this movie. Thank you. I really, really loved your performance. You. It was absolutely wonderful. I really wonderful. appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. I really appreciate it. It was one of the most scary. I can't imagine. It was like, and also like I just felt this so when I read that script, first of all, one of the things that drew me to the script was they, my agency sent it to me and then I read it and like in the first page, it's like Bonnie, an architect, Latina, 30s. I was like, dope. Oh, yeah. and then I sort of flipped through to see like, well, is there going to be like, what's going to, how is that going to manifest in right. this story? Right, she's actually a drug dealer on the side. Right, like <laughs> what is the deal? Right. But it, that's all it was, was like that Jess Thompson wanted a woman of color as the lead of the movie and decided that it want, it was going to be Latina. And then like, so good. I, I mean like that, I, yeah, I haven't seen, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll ask you, when's the last time you saw a Latina lead in a movie? That had integrity throughout the film or wasn't uh, positioned to be um, comic relief. Right. I mean, Beatrice at Dinner came out this year. Oh, amazing. And that was Selma Hayek. Yeah. Um, but then you think like, okay, well, 
who, you know, we have J-Lo. We do. We've got Selma. Mm -hmm. We've got Penelope. Yes, we do. That's right. We do have Penelope. And all of them are such strong, amazing actors, but that shouldn't be it. You know, it's not, you know, like when you count like white actresses, you ain't coming up with a list of three. You know what I mean? That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that was important to me. And then also like I sent, I was reading, I read the script and then I have a really good friend who's an incest survivor. Wow. Yeah. Her story is crazy. I can't it's imagine. crazy. Wow. And I read it and was like, okay, I've watched her in the last six years that I've known her. I've watched her like come to terms with mm. what happened to yeah. her. And like, you know, at first she was like, I think that she, I think she figured out that there was abuse in therapy. And then once she figured it out and like told her mom, like wow. they basically cut her out of the family. And then like she had like all of these like memories come back and like her physical body like wow. reacted in all these really interesting and awful ways. Yeah. And like, so when I read the script, I was like, uh, Sha, should I like get someone to read? Like, I was like, maybe I should have her read it. And I did. And she wrote me back after she read it and was like, I think you should do this film. I've never seen a story like written from the point of view of someone that's like lived through it. Yeah. Which is crazy also when you think about how that many times. Is crazy. Rape is used in movies and television all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. And it's always like a plot device. Yeah. Or like this thing happens to this person and they, they, now they're a full-fledged human being after this thing happens. Right. You know, or they've gone like, the complete opposite direction and they're right. on drugs and right. homeless. You right. Know? Yeah. Or now it's going to be a revenge fantasy where she like goes and finds him and makes him pay, which is like, yeah. of course we all want that, you right. know, but the reality is like what one in five women, one in five women has been sexually assaulted or raped in their lifetime. One in 67 men. So like, wow, that's just, just isn't that crazy? Wow. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. So like, you think about, you think about like you go to a show and how many people are on stage with you and then how many people in the audience. Yeah. And like think about how many of those people and like half of them just like it happened to them and they don't talk about it. They haven't told anyone about it. You know, it's like they don't have any language to talk about it with anyone. And like hopefully this movie gives people a starting point. I mean, so much of our information about the world is gathered through media, you know? And so like for people to see the rape happen and then be like, oh, these are the things that happen immediately after. Right. You have to go to the hospital and yeah. then you have to like, you have to show them like. I was so scared she wasn't going to tell. Well, I don't want to give things away. I know, I, was, I, I know, don't I know. I, know. I, know. I know. There's, a, there's so a lot scared. of like, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of keeping the audience like on their toes. I think Jessica Thompson, who wrote the movie, did a really wonderful job of like exploring all these different avenues of that, like our the reality of what this thing is versus like some Hollywood version of it. Absolutely. Okay. So what else is happening? Uh, what else is happening? Um, I'm still in Hamilton Yeah. and, and, um, I'm also I'm starting to branch out a little into some television stuff. Yeah. And it's it. really exciting. <laughs> do you think you'll ever move to LA or do you think this is your home forever? Man, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I get, um, I'm I'm also in a love hate relationship with New York. Mm-hmm. Um, this is home. This is where I'm born and raised, and my family is here. Mm-hmm. And this is these are my roots. This is what, like in my friggin' blood. Yeah. But and when I feel it when I move away, when I'm away long enough, it's it's like oh my God. How did you survive in Oregon? Like what was that? It was beautiful. It was beautiful because I knew there was a time. There was limit. an end. Right. Yeah. I like knew a, that. Like a sexy affair. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> like, this that. is going to be end. This is going to end. So I'm just going to appreciate it while it's happening. Right. right yeah. Right. And then a sad goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wistful. Yeah. <laughs> right. How long were you there? You were there the whole time, right? Seven months for that season. The yeah. Oregon Shakespeare Festival is a theater that both of us worked at, but at different times, yes. right? Yep. Different times we were working there. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was after you. Yeah. 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 And I was just that one season because yeah. then Hamilton happened. But, right. But the, um, um, I, I love those experiences, right? Yeah. I love them because they're the complete opposite of New York. Right. Right. And it's nourishing in all sorts of ways. But then somewhere in the middle, I'm like, Someone, please. Yeah, put forward. I need a train. <laughs> yeah. I need, I know it's going to stall. Need, I know it's going to make me late. Right. But I need a train. Right. <laughs> or like, I need, oh, so many things there. It's like, you, there's only a certain, there's like a limited amount of restaurants in the town. Right. And, you're and just, then you hit them all by like month three and you're like, wow, I guess I'm going to go back and. <laughs> right. Do them all again. Right. So this time get, in a different order. Right. <laughs> this time I'm going to order a different salad. 
<laughs> it can get exhausting. No, yeah. yeah. It, it was, but it was, it was, it was the right place at the right time. Yeah. But I always get the itch to come back to New York. I really do. So I, I've been to LA a few times and I've, um, been there for work. I've never just sort of gone. Yeah. Um, I also don't drive. So oh, yeah. there's that. I've you never. You don't know how? I don't know how. In fact, I've had two driving lessons in my life, uh, given by Uzo Aduba. Oh my gosh. Uh, who helped me learn how to parallel park. This is an amazing story. And, um, and drive in a parking lot. Amazing. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she and I go back quite a bit. Um, but, but that's it. This is that's the it. Only two times I've been behind the wheel of a car. I mean, I didn't know how to drive before I moved there. You serious? I knew, well, I didn't know how to drive. And then I decided that I was moving and Catherine Coulson. Oh my God. Sweet Catherine Coulson helped me, help teach me how to drive. Oh. Catherine Coulson and David Salsa. Do you know, you know David Salsa? David, yes, I do. Yeah. Both of them helped me learn. That's amazing. Because it was the summer before I was going and I was doing Measure for Measure at the Shakespeare Festival. Yes. And so on my off time, I learned, I mean, I was a terrible <laughs> at first. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of, though. It was though. bad. It was I'm, bad. But yeah. at first, when you move to LA, you don't have to get on the freeway that much. Like you can get around okay. without. Okay. And then by the time you're like ready to do it, it's not that scary. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. So how long are you going to be doing Hamilton, do you think? Well, do you that's have the a, question of is it? the hour for folks. Um, let's just say that um, my time with the show will uh, for sure end. What if you were like, it's ending today? This is it. <laughs> last night was my this last is show. The announcement. I actually am out of work right now. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, the... the, the yeah, it's 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 got to approach. It's yeah. got to, right? Like yeah. the show eventually is gonna need someone else to 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 inhabit that role and give it new life. Mm-hmm. And and I wanna move on to other creative things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, and my body needs a break. Mm-hmm. This three hour show on those turntables. Yeah, dude, that's not a joke. So yeah, my body needs a, a little bit of a break yeah, you too. Need a break. So so it's coming. So what's a weekday like? Like what time do you get up? I'm like what do you do? Up by ten. Uh-huh. I'm out the apartment by noon. Mm-hmm. I'm at my trainer by one. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I have a voice lesson, I have it after that. Okay. And then I'm either, if there's time, I'm home to shower and get food and change and get to the theater. If yeah. there's no time, then I go straight to the theater, Yeah. get food delivered there and shower and get ready there. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. You're like a monk. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a bubble. I think people don't understand that about theater actors. I don't like think, yeah, yeah. I think people I don't get that it's not just you should like what a great job. You just have to work for like three hours a night. It's like nope. no <laughs> your whole day. And like for me, it was yeah. always like I don't know if this is the way for you, but like yeah. it was like increasing anxiety <laughs> up until curtain call. Yeah, totally. And then like a release when you do the show right. and then you maybe like go out for drinks or something Right. and then you wake up the next morning and again like it's, it's like, all right, pressure. the show is coming <laughs> and I gotta do the show later and okay. Yeah. I love that you're saying that because that's real. It's real. You know, and it's, it's, that's your like work integrity. That's mm-hmm. your, that's, that's, that's you wanting to make sure that you're like doing everything you can to execute the show as easily as you can and, yep. you know, proficiently as you can mm-hmm. and holy smokes, there are days where I get to that backstage preset area and I'm I still don't feel quite ready. Right. And I just feel crazy. Right. And like thank God for my castmates. Yeah. Who I can just go and hug and be like, I feel crazy. They're like, you'll be great. You'll be great. And like, right. Okay. You're like, yeah, I will be great. I will thank be great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's totally yes. That. Yep. <laughs> That's the best thing about being part of an ensemble, right? Yep. Is that you like when your voices start getting really gnarly you can have other people that are like you're great you're doing amazing it's totally that and then it wakes up that part of you that's like hey you are you're really great (laughs) does that happen a lot in on on, in camera camera work for you i mean i think so on our show because it is such an ensemble show it's like i i can be i mean some people don't i mean you know melissa from arrow of course and like she is so tough i've never met anyone like that she's so it. tough and like when she is stressed about something or nervous about something you can't tell you only hear about it later if she chooses to tell you she was yeah. nervous about it if yeah. she chooses but she's so she's like teflon wow. you know it's yeah. just like everything just boom bounces right off of her <laughs> i am not like that i am much more like Ugh. so like <laughs> like sometimes i need to ask the other actors to like like, I'm really nervous about this. I'm like, I don't think this is funny. Like, how can it be funnier? And like, right. all of them are great at 
giving advice or saying like what they think or yeah. just saying like, you got it. It's really funny. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You yeah. know, um, Andy's really great at coming back after it. Cause he sees the, the, he'll see like the first cut yeah. of stuff and then he'll give notes and then he'll see the second cut or whatever. So he sees the episodes way before we do. Right. And he's always great about coming to set and being like, it's really funny. That storyline, you know, who up to whoever that week. But That's he's like, dope. he's a really good, I mean, I our, so supportive. our script supervisor, Grace, she said to me the other day, she was like, I don't know what I'm going to do after this show. I think I'm just going to retire. Oh, wow. Because it's, it's like so ideal. It's yeah. Like, she's <sighs> like, I've never been on a set like this where everybody likes each other and we care about each other and we like ask each other what's going on in our lives. And she's like, it's not always like this, Stephanie. Yeah. I was like, dang. But that's like theater too. I mean, you, you, you sometimes get cast that don't, that don't gel all the way. I know. You, you know? know what's yeah. funny? When I was dating my ex, uh, he sh- who shall not be named. Okay. When I was dating him, <laughs> I used to be like, I don't know what the problem is. I've always been in like great cast, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I've, uh, everyone always loves each other. Yeah. And he was like, it's coming. And then that year, no that way. year, the year that I did Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and um, American Night. Oh, it was at, like at OSF? Yeah, okay. it was both of them were a struggle in their own ways, like wow. for different reasons. But yeah. it was like the first time that I was ever like, oh, this is what it's like when not everything gels. And then I just had to like push through it, you know? It's so hard. Yeah. It's such extra energy. Oh my God. <laughs> when someone's a butthead and you have to see them every day or like share a dressing room with That's a butthead. Even worse. Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Because it's then, then the energy start, the butthead energy starts from the moment you show up at the theater. Yep. Yep. Like the moment Again, you walk in. The moral of the story, folks. Don't, Don't be, be a butthead. butthead. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's really not. But for some people, it's like impossible, I guess. <laughs> That's Woof. so good. Wait, so um, can I ask about yeah. the ex? Yeah, yes. I mean, and- my ex is also a theater actor. He was brilliant. He is brilliant. He's a brilliant actor. And he's such a nice human being. Yeah. But I think ultimately, there were just things that it was like, oh, I'll never see this the way that you do and you'll never see it the way that I do. And then there was also when we started dating, I was really adamantly against getting married. And then, and this is a testament to him and his personality. I, as we went along in our relationship, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is someone I could see marrying because they're so wonderful in all these ways. But he was not, Wow. he didn't want to get married. And so like, it was really hard because I had come to this decision about myself and what I wanted yeah. and the person that I was with and loved didn't want that same thing. I under- I just went through that. Oh my God, it's so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was I, it I the re- same? Like you were like, I'm I, ready to commit. And they I'm, were like, actually, well, I, I was like, I'm ready for children. I'm ready to be a father. I'm ready to like girl, be a dad. Yes, right? yes. I mean, come on. Yes, and, same. And, and uh, when I hit that, I was like, wow, I'm with someone who's who's not there Yep. and and may not ever be there. Yep. Um, but it, it yeah, that's a big, big chasm. Yes, and you can't you can't force someone to cross that with you. You no. can't you or to come over to your side because it's such a big decision and it's such it. I'm the same. Like I hit like, I mean, it was really like watching my castmates all start to get married and get pregnant. Well, Melly's like a perfect example. Melly yeah. got pregnant, had the beautiful child. I was like, oh my god, my, my friends are having babies. I know. <laughs> and like watching her be pregnant and shoot the show was just like this is. So so amazing. amazing. It, yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. And then Joe's wife had a baby. Oh. Andy had a baby. Oh, Chelsea gosh. got pregnant and had a baby. And they're all like, they're like fully living in this like thing. And yeah. I was like, do I want this? I think I want this. Yeah. And my partner at the time didn't want it. And yeah. so it was like gut wrenching. And yeah. it took me a long time to get there too, because I was like, there's got to be a way to make it work. Right. But that's a testimony to, to the relationship, right? Like yeah. you put in the time to see really if it did. could still you know, function. No, we both really tried. But, and like retrospectively, I think like I could have maybe done some other things. I could have done more. Yeah. But I think, you know, hindsight's 20, 20. Yeah. Always. Always. Lord in heaven. Yes. Um, but then I started dating someone. I was going to ask what's going on. (laughs) I I started, started, it was crazy. Cause like, I started dating this person and I was like dating a couple of different people at yeah. the same time. And cause I was like, yeah, I'm single. I'm just going to like, woo, yeah, no, I know. Party. <laughs> yeah. go hard. You know, that feeling lasts for like five minutes. Yeah. And then you're like, Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Yeah. And this particular person was just like 
from the get go, I was like, he's really awesome. There's so many great things about him. And like, I just like being around him and he makes me feel really good. And, yeah. and then I don't know, it just like, it happened pretty fast. Like, so yeah, it's weird. It's like, it is that gross thing that everyone said, which was like, I don't know. You just like meet them and you know, and it's so easy. I Everything's know, it's so easy. So true, though. And I'm like, every time someone would say that, I'd be like, shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, just vomit so a little annoying. bit in the back of your mouth. Yeah. Like, no, that's Get not true. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I know. But it but is kind of true. That's exactly it's kind of true. It's like, oh, yeah. this is like, I mean, not everything is easy. And sometimes we get in arguments about stupid whatever. Oh, totally. But generally it's like, yeah, this seems like very chill. All, all of it seems really right and chill mm -hmm. and happy. And you're po he's a really positive influence on me. And like, yeah. uh, he's just great. He's just really great. That's awesome. It's 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 funny that you say it, like that that series of events because I'm now with someone and it very much happened that way. <gasps> really? Like you know, five minutes of like I'm single and, right. it, and I didn't even meet anybody. <laughs> I just, like, I just had just that like, energy I'm of like myself, I'm though. feeling myself. I'm feeling myself, yo. <laughs> and then I met my current partner and it was like, oh, oh, this is easy. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is and yeah, he does like. Bring out the best in me, and and That's yeah, nice. yeah. That's, yeah. How long have you guys been together now? It's new. It's about four months. Ooh, does he want to have kids? Yes, he does. That's nice. Yeah, that was and that was like that was our first early combo date. <laughs> yeah, ours too. <laughs> right. I think as you get older, you start because you're like, all right, this clock is literally right. ticking. Is this worth it or not? Right. Let me ask the questions. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was a guy that I went on a couple of dates with, and I, and like I just told the story earlier today. He was like, we were having dinner or something. And I was like, well, well, you know, like when you have kids someday, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I don't know if I want to have kids yet. And I was like, oh. And my uh, brain was like, all right, you better check out what mm -hmm, he means. Mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, I think I want to have kids like in my late 40s or something. And I was like, skirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> this can't continue because like in your late 40s, I'll also be in my late 40s. Yeah. And like, I don't want to wait that long. Right, so right. you probably need to date a 20 year old. Right. Right. And he is. So Oh, and there it is. Best of luck to them. So the math worked. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, you're totally Is he right. an actor in the TV? He guy is. Yeah, yeah, which is also um something new for me. Like like uh, I don't I mean I can count on one hand the amount of like fellow artists I've mm. dated. Um and and so it's but it's it works. That's it absolutely great. It works, yeah. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just really excited for your engagement. Congratulations Thanks. for that. It's going to be great. Yeah. You should come to the wedding. Oh, my God. Let me know. Yeah, it. it'll be next year. It'll be next fall. I mean, LA? maybe. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be done with the show or not. Who we'll knows? See. You're here to hear first. <laughs> God. I mean, I'm like, I'm kind of nervous about that wedding. Just be, my hands started sweating. Literally oh just God. started fully Literally sweating. Literally broke out. <laughs> well, only because like. That's every, huge. It's a big deal, and like I wanted to go, like I want it to be like a really good party. I want everyone to dance and have fun. Yeah. You know, I don't want it to be too precious. And I, right, right. I just want, I like what I would like to do is when I went to Joe's wedding, Joe Latrulio's wedding. I left thinking like that was such a good party. It was such a good party. Everyone yeah. was so happy. The food was great. It was such a good party, and that's how I would like people leaving my wedding. And I also <laughs> want to have food trucks instead of. That's it's like so a sit down dope. dinner. Yeah. I think that'll be good. That is such a good idea. Tray pass for sure. Yeah, yeah the tray pass. Yeah. And then like <laughs> five bars <laughs> and multiple food trucks. I love it. And these things called, you know, when you go to a music festival or something and there's like booths that have like stuff to do. So industry speak for that, which I didn't know is an activation. That's what's called. That's Ooh, what's called wow. an activation. Okay. So I want like activation stations at my wedding so that people <laughs> are like doing fun shit. Like there's this thing in, in LA where you can get your aura photographed. It's like inside a tent. Oh, that's so funny. I it's so do great. That. That's so it's good. so LA, right? It's so, it's so LA. It's like, oh, at Stephanie's wedding, we got our aura photographed. It was amazing. <laughs> so I want to throw up on myself, but also. <laughs> but you want to do that. I'm that sounds great. It. I'm yeah, owning it. I, I love LA. I love LA. <laughs> I don't care anymore. That's actually a really great idea. Uh, my my friend who who's associate choreographer for for Hamilton, she just recently got married, and another wedding where it was like 
the best time, the best time. from beginning oh. to end. And like right after the ceremony, beautiful ceremony. And then there were these games. We could just go to all these little like game oh, spots fun. and like just and like play these large size games. And it was absolutely like awesome. What? I'm gonna steal um, some of these. I don't know the name of it, but it's like a sand sack. You gotta get into oh, the yeah, center the little, hole. The and, little, I think it's called cornhole, maybe. Okay, that sounds right. Yes. And uh and 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 I wanna I wanna say there was a Oh, there was some, there was something else, but I got stuck in the cornhole. That doesn't sound right. That sounds really bad. <laughs> that sounds really bad. <laughs> that is so funny. That's cool though. But there was like a bar everywhere, everywhere. you looked. You don't want anybody to wait for alcohol it was at a, a wedding. Good time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> mine's going to be a good time. I think it's going to be a party. That sounds be amazing. Party. I am so excited for everything that's happening. Same. With and for you. Same. I'm really happy for you. you me too. Me too. Who would have known that, know. that, remember that night that we met at the restaurant throwing, they were like at OSF, they were, yeah. it was like the opening night party that weekend. You were like, yeah. hi, um, I'm Alyssa Ferrero's friend. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I, I was, was like, so oh! shy to say hello. <laughs> I was like, it was like a big hug like we'd already met. It was so great though. And then afterwards I was like, I shouldn't greet everyone that way. I don't know if everyone's comfortable with that amount of like. Oh, it was so great. <gasps> totally. Absolutely. No, it was, it was so wonderful. And now here yep. we are. I know. Here we are. What 200 lives? pizzas later. What wonderful lives we've created for ourselves. Indeed. It's pretty great. Cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs>Listeners, check out our Instagram for a picture of those 200 pizzas and also a fantastic picture provided by Javi himself of Javier and Stephanie backstage at Hamilton. Now, Nick, I have been backstage at Hamilton. Should we Instagram one of me and Javi? You, and, and wasn't somebody else kind of very notable there at the same time? Well, yeah, me. Oh, oh, beside Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu is there with his son. The Birdman and Little Birdman Jr. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Listeners, if you enjoyed today's episode, definitely make sure to check out Javi in conversation with John Cameron Mitchell from last year. And there's also a nice little pivot from this week's episode to next week's. Because, of course, one of the people who taught Stephanie how to drive was Catherine Coulson, who is known to the world best as the log lady from Twin Peaks. And Twin Peaks is kind of the subject of next week's podcast, which will be a conversation between the co-creator of Twin Peaks, Mark Frost, and Sam Esmail, the creator of Mr. Robot. They're big fans of each other. They had an awesome conversation. And make sure you come back next week to listen to it. Definitely. They go very, very deep on both shows. Listeners, subscribe to the TalkHouse podcast on Stitcher or iTunes. And while you're there, rate and review. Every time you do, it helps someone else find the show. And of course, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, where we have some awesome live podcast conversations recorded at the Sonos store. And hit us up on Twitter, at TalkHouse. We're just like all over that Twitter. Today's episode was recorded by me, Elia Einhorn, and co-produced by Mark Yoshizumi. Thanks, Mark. Till next time. See you then.